the latest press conference featuring Deputy PM of Canada and WEF Board of Trustees member, Christia Freeland, her behavior raises eyebrows yet again. Known for her peculiar conduct in previous engagements, one can't help but wonder, what is causing Freeland erratic behavior? From awkward gestures to unusual statements, her demeanor often leaves viewers perplexed. As she takes the stage alongside Justin Trudeau, the question lingers. What lies behind Christia Freeland's surprising revelations? In recent press conferences, it's not the first time Christia Freeland has exhibited peculiar behavior. Her actions have left many observers puzzled, with her demeanor often veering into the realm of the unusual. From awkward gestures to bizarre statements, Freeland's conduct in public appearances has raised questions about her state of mind and intentions. Despite her prominent position as Deputy PM of Canada and a member of the WEF Board of Trustees, her behavior has drawn attention for all the wrong reasons. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Vancouver South. Uh, before I begin, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that we are on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Christia Freeland's recent statements regarding Canadian homes as non-financial assets have sparked controversy and raised eyebrows across the nation. Her assertion that Canadian homes are not financial assets has drawn criticism and skepticism from homeowners and experts alike. By downplaying the significance of homeownership as a financial investment, Freeland has left many Canadians feeling uneasy about the government's intentions. Furthermore, her proposal for a tax on homeowners has only fueled concerns among the populace. Many view this tax as an encroachment on property rights and fear that it could exacerbate the already dire housing crisis in Canada. Freeland's seemingly cavalier attitude towards homeownership and her readiness to implement such a tax have undermined trust in her leadership and competency. Moreover, Freeland's impassioned defense of the tax during the parliamentary session was met with skepticism and opposition from the Conservative Party leader. His dismissal of her argument as lacking in common sense further underscores the doubts surrounding Freeland's policies and decision-making abilities. Overall, Freeland's handling of the issue has only deepened mistrust and skepticism towards her leadership, leaving Canadians questioning her motives and judgment. Is that a good deal? What I wonder is, is the Conservative Party now advocating for there to be empty homes all across Canada at a time when we have a housing crisis? Our government believes homes are for Canadians to live in. We are working hard to have more homes built faster. And we're also working hard to be sure thank you that very homes much. are not a financial thank, asset. Thank, thank you very They're much, for Canadians Minister. To live in. No, thank, thank you, very you much, Minister. for making clear that the we Conservative Party doesn't we, actually care about we, whether homes are for Canadians to live in. Does no. the Conservative Party not care if there are vacant thank properties you, across the we're country while people need homes? We're actually advocating for some common sense. And it doesn't I guess sound you're like advocating a very for, for not taxpayers. caring for people let's, to be housed. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. I, I can um, see why you would want to, miss... yes. If you're not well-versed on this issue, we've included a link for your convenience. Simply click on the provided link to access a comprehensive discussion on the topic. This resource will provide you with detailed information to help you better understand the context and implications of the situation. In a recent speech addressing university students, Christia Freeland, Deputy PM of Canada and member of the WEF Board of Trustees, delivered a stunning critique of capitalist democracy, ostensibly in the context of combating climate change. However, her remarks seemed to lack coherence and depth, veering into a territory of perplexing contradictions and questionable intentions. Freeland attempt to link the effectiveness of democratic societies to environmental challenges appeared more like a desperate attempt to garner attention than a genuine effort to engage with the complexities of governance and climate action. By framing the issue as a binary choice between democracy and environmental responsibility, she oversimplified a multifaceted problem, reducing it to a simplistic narrative that conveniently ignored broader systemic issues. Her portrayal of nature as a silent judge, silently questioning the efficacy of democracy, bordered on the absurd. It suggested a patronizing attitude toward both environmental challenges and democratic principles, reducing complex issues to mere rhetorical devices for political gain. Does capitalist democracy still work? That's the question being posed around kitchen tables in my country and this one. As parents wonder if our children can count on capitalist democracy's essential promise of a future more prosperous than our present. It is the question being posed by our shrinking glaciers and our warming oceans, which are asking us wordlessly but emphatically if democratic societies can rise to the existential challenge of climate change. In essence, Freeland's speech reflected a troubling trend of political opportunism, 
where genuine issues are exploited for personal or ideological gain. By attempting to undermine the foundation of democratic societies under the guise of environmental advocacy, she revealed a willingness to sacrifice principles for short-term political expediency. One of the most notable aspects of Freeland public image is her significant net worth, which has raised eyebrows and questions about her financial interests and allegiances. Reports indicate that her wealth has increased substantially in recent years, leading to speculation about the sources of her income and investments. Critics argue that her financial standing may influence her decision-making as a government official, potentially compromising her ability to act in the best interests of Canadians. Furthermore, Freeland connections to the World Economic Forum have come under scrutiny, with some questioning the extent of her involvement with the organization and whether it poses a conflict of interest with her role in the Canadian government. As a key figure in both political and global economic circles, Freeland dual roles have sparked concerns about transparency and accountability, particularly regarding her interactions with international elites and corporate interests. Moreover, Freeland has faced criticism for her handling of various policy issues, including trade negotiations and economic policy. Her tenure as Minister of Foreign Affairs was marked by contentious trade talks with the United States and other countries, with some accusing her of prioritizing corporate interests over those of Canadian workers and industries. In addition to these policy disputes, Freeland has faced scrutiny for her alleged involvement in the We Charity scandal, which saw the organization awarded a lucrative government contract despite concerns about its financial management and ties to the Trudeau family. While Freeland has denied any wrongdoing, questions remain about her role in the controversy and whether she adequately addressed conflicts of interest within the government. Overall, Christia Freeland's tenure in Canadian politics has been marked by controversies and questions about her financial interests, connections to global elites, and handling of key policy issues. As she continues to navigate the complexities of governance and international relations, scrutiny of her actions and decisions is likely to persist, raising important questions about transparency, accountability, and the intersection of wealth and power in Canadian politics. Christia Freeland's involvement in Canadian politics has been marked by controversies and scrutiny surrounding her personal wealth connections to the World Economic Forum, and handling of policy matters. Her significant net worth and alleged conflicts of interest have raised concerns about her ability to act in the best interests of Canadians, while her ties to international elites have sparked questions about transparency and accountability. Furthermore, her role in contentious policy issues and the We Charity scandal has fueled criticisms of her decision-making and leadership. As Freeland continues to hold influential positions in government and global organizations, it is imperative that she remains transparent and accountable to the public. The Canadian electorate deserves leaders who prioritize the well-being of the nation over personal interests or affiliations. Moving forward, ongoing scrutiny of Freeland actions and decisions will be essential to ensure the integrity of Canadian democracy and governance. As Freeland continues to hold influential positions in government and global organizations, it is imperative that she remains transparent and accountable to the public. The Canadian electorate deserves leaders who prioritize the well-being of the nation over personal interests or affiliations. Moving forward, ongoing scrutiny of Freeland actions and decisions will be essential to ensure the integrity of Canadian democracy and governance. Stay informed about the latest developments shaping Canada's future. Subscribe to our channel Scoop Canada for insightful analysis and discussions on a wide range of topics. Subscribe now to broaden your understanding and engage in meaningful conversations.